So in this chapter, you will learn about the basic principle of recombinant DNA technology and then describe details on the recombinant markers, explain the use of DNA library as well as the cDNA or complementary DNA and then discuss about the application of recombinant DNA technology. Next, okay, we look at, at the uh, example of technique such as gel electrophoresis, which they can uh, separate and visualize the DNA fragment. The second one, we have a PCR techniques that actually to amplify the DNA. First, we look at the principle and methods in recombinant DNA technology. So, in fact that, around uh, 1970s, the development of recombinant DNA technologies is actually the new research approaches uh, which researchers splice together DNA from different organisms in the lab laboratory. So the purpose is actually, okay, the basic uh, goal of this technology is actually to enable scientists to obtain many copies or amplify okay, uh, of a specific DNA segment that carry a particular gene okay, which refers to the gene of interest. So in DNA rec recombinant DNA technology, we can say that DNA technology is a technique for sequencing and manipulating of DNA. So when we say about the recombinant, it means that the DNA molecules is made in vitro or in test tube with different sources. The DNA cloning is a process to produce multiple copies of a specific DNA segment. When gene cloning is a process to produce multiple copies of a single gene. So that's a difference between DNA cloning and gene cloning. So the purpose, as I uh, mentioned before, is uh, to make many copies about a particular gene and also to produce a protein product. Okay, recombinant DNA technology was not developed quickly because after decades of passive research and a lot of uh, knowledge, the technology has become uh, highly developed and now it will be used widely for research as well as a development of different biotechnological application. So this is the six tools that use in recombinant DNA technology. So we start with the first one, it's about the target DNA. So target DNA, they contain gene of interest. Uh, for example, gene that are responsible for insulin production. And then uh, most of the gene of interest Okay, will be extracted from organisms, okay, for example, in human cells. Next two, we have restriction enzyme or also known as restriction endonucleases. So we have a lot of examples for restriction enzyme like EcoR1, HIN3, BAMH1 and some small one in this table. So this enzyme will be used in gene cloning and genetic engineering. So if you look at the name of this restriction enzyme, it's actually derived from the name for the bacteria where it come from. So naturally, this enzyme is come from the bacteria. Let's say for EcoR1, they are from E. coli, HIN3 from Haemophilus influenza, and so on. So what is special and difference between this type of restriction enzyme? So firstly, we look at the recognition and cleavage sites. It means that it refers to the uh, point where this enzyme cut the sequence of DNA strand. The first one for equal R1, if you can see in this table, for the strand 5 to 3N, the cutting is between base G and E. Same goes for the complementary strand 3 to 5N. It will find out between G and E and then cut point is here. 
So after the cutting process, it will uh, form the products that we call as a, a sticky end. Okay, and uh, same goes for hen tree. They also produce sticky end, but different cleavage site or recognition sites. It is actually between A and T, adenine and adenine. For bump H1, it will cut at between two guanine base for both strand and it will produce sticky end. And for the last one, as MA1, it will cut at between C and G. And for the complementary sequence, also between G and C. But their products will have blunt and so why do uh, bacteria produce this such enzyme? So uh, it's actually the bacteria, they can define itself when they have uh, restriction enzymes that can attack the bacteriophage uh, DNA. So for restriction enzyme, it's uh, enable scientists to cut DNA from chromosome into shorter fragment in a controlled way. So many of the restriction enzyme, they will use uh, recombinant DNA studies at the palindromic sequence. Uh, palindromic sequence means that the base sequence of one strand, let's say this one, the first example, reads the same as its complementary when both are read in the uh, opposite direction. So here, 5 to 3, they have this sequence and the other uh, strand, they also have the same sequence. So this one called as a palindromic sequence. So by cutting both strands of uh, DNA, it will produce the uh, sticky or blunt end. So it depends on uh, the cutting okay, point or cleavage site for each restriction enzyme. Okay, in this slide, we we'll look at the example of restriction enzyme, how they produce sticky end and blunt end. We look at for sticky end, the example of restriction enzyme here is Hint tree. Hint tree we cut at a cleavage site between A and A at both strands. So this one we call as a staggered fashion. And this staggered fashion, after cutting, it will produce this sticky end. Same goes for Eco R1. It will produce sticky end because their cutting point at both strands between C, G and A, and also the second strand is G and A. So it also have staggered fashion and their products is a sticky end compared to the uh, other restriction enzyme which is small one they will produce blunt end so blunt end this one between the base c and g for both strand from the example just now on previous slide we can say that restriction enzyme is very specific Specific in terms of uh, recognizing of the sequence that are palindromic, which is uh, refers to the sequence that are identical when we read in the opposite direction. Like this example here, we have two strand five to three and three prime to five n. So if you look at the sequence of uh, DNA, they have a same sequence in the opposite direction. So this one we call as a palindromic sequence. And then uh, the second one is about the restriction site. So restriction site or the cutting point on the DNA strand is very specific for each restriction enzyme. So this uh, recognizing uh, sequence contain about four to eight nucleotide, and it will make many cuts in the DNA molecules to produce a restriction fragment or a short fragment of DNA. The third tools in recombinant DNA technology will be used DNA ligase. So DNA ligase uh, we will catalyze the joining of DNA from two different sources by the formation of phosphodiester bond between the sugar and phosphate of nucleotides. Number four, in recombinant DNA technology, we use cloning vector or vector. So vector is DNA molecules that can carry foreign DNA into host cells. The bacteriophages and DNA molecules, which fall as a plasmid, is two examples of vectors. If we can look at here in this diagram, the bacteria plasmid is widely used in gene technology. So bacteria plasmid is a DNA 
in a circular shape and most of us meet they are separate and the size is much smaller that are present inside the bacteria size such as in E. coli. So researchers will introduce plasmid into bacterial cells by a method that called transformation. And other than that, we have also the cosmic and also YEC or yeast artificial chromosome that can act as a cloning vector or vector. Here we look at why the bacterial plasmid are widely used in the recombinant DNA technology. So this is some of the characteristics for the bacterial plasmid. So among them, they are origin of replication, one or more restriction sites, and genes that confer resistance to an antibiotic or that let the cells use a specific nutrients. Uh, the first one, okay, we look at the characteristic about the shape of the DNA. They are small double-stranded circular and they have the ability to replicate separately from their own chromosome. And then the second one is they have dominant selectable marker, which are very important to detect the recombinant DNA during the selection stage. So these features will allow the researchers to select cells transformed by recombinant plasmid and identify which cells that contain plasmid with inserted DNA. For example, we look at the bacteria cells transformed with a plasmid that includes a gene for resistant to the antibiotic ampicillin, let's say here, MPR gene, that ampicillin resistant gene. This uh, gene is a resistant to the ampicillin. They will grow in a medium that contains ampicillin, whereas the untransformed cells, they cannot. So this is one important of the selectable marker. And then the third one, they have unique restriction enzymes cleavage site. This one for the insertion of uh, DNA sequences that are to be cloned. Here we look at how recombinant plasmid or DNA are formed. For the first step, the bacterial plasmid that act as a vector will be cut by using a restriction enzyme. So this enzyme we cut at the sugar phosphate backbones in the two DNA strand in a staggered manner. So staggered manner, it will form or produce the sticky end. Next, for the DNA or target DNA that contain gene of interest, in this diagram, it shows you in the pink color here, it refers to target DNA. So this fragment of DNA from different sources will cut also by the same restriction enzyme that cut the plasmid before. So this way, it will form the same sticky end that are complementary to the bacterial plasmid. Okay, the last step, when both DNA strand, they produce a sticky end, it will be joined together by the DNA ligase. So here DNA ligase will catalyze the joining between uh, DNA from two different sources. The green one is referred to the bacterial plasmid and the pink color is referred to the target DNA that contains gene of interest. So these are sealed by the DNA ligase, this strand, and it will form or produce a stable recombinant DNA molecule. So now recombinant DNA molecules, also known as a recombinant plasmid. Okay, now we look at for the next uh, tools in DNA recombinant, which is a uh, host cells. So the host cells Okay, it can be any organisms or cells. Okay, this is the example of host cells. So we have here E. coli is a bacteria cells that are commonly used as a host cells because of the characteristic just now in our previous slide. And also we have an uh, example of a uh, plant cell. Okay, then the last one. We have marker genes okay, as a tools in the DNA, recombinant DNA technology. So marker genes, okay, it can be selectable marker, which refers to the uh, genes that are... Okay, we look at here in this slide, it's about the... Okay, we look at here, it's an example for 
uh, GFP or green fluorescent protein that first uh, isolated from the jellyfish Aquaria victoria so when the teen they are exposed to blue or ultraviolet or UV light range the GFP will glow bright green and this gene will be used and uh, inserted into plasmid so here is the uh, gene for the GFP in the plasmid